Hello and welcome to Veterans Remember. I'm Dick Gooding, your host for Veterans Remember, where we have the opportunity to talk with a number of veterans from Hopkinton uh, who have had experiences in uh, various wars uh, that we've fought in over the number of years uh, going back to World War II. And uh, today we have the opportunity to talk with Mr. Tony DiStefano, who's a, a longtime resident of Hopkinton and uh, who's had some interesting experiences. And uh, uh, we'd like to welcome uh, Tony to Veterans Remember. Thank and you. Hope, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, make him feel comfortable enough to share some of the, the stories. To start off with uh, Tony, uh, how long have you lived in Hopkinton, or uh, approximately how long have you been here? Well, let's see, I moved here when I was six years old, so it's got to be 82 years. 82 years, yep. six years, well, uh, six years old, where did you move from? Watertown. Watertown? Mm. Now your, your parents are both uh, uh, Italians and were yep. actually born in Italy? Yep, yep. Uh, maybe this, is there a story about how they came to the United States? And I really can't shed too much light on it, except my mother landed in Boston and my father went through Ellis Island. And how they got together in New York and Boston, I don't know, but. They found each other anyway. They did. <laughs> what, brought, uh, what brought you and your family out to Hopkinton from Watertown? We had a small place out there, as best I can recall, and Dad wanted to get more acreage and buildings and so on. We had a bunch of cows for a while, chickens and pigs and all that kind of stuff. Then a hurricane of 38, if I remember rightly, part of the roof on the barn, and there wasn't too much money around. <laughs> That end of the agriculture. <laughs> and and uh, where in Hopkinton was, uh, uh, were you grown, where did you grow up? Oh, down on Hayden Row. I don't know the number, it was right across the street from the Browns. Oh, down on Lower Hayden Row. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Midway anyways. Yeah. Well, and, and you went to uh, a local school on Hayden Row Street, as I recall. Oh, we sure did. The little four, four rumor that was down there, four grades, I should say. And Amy Phipps was the teacher for all four grades. She's a grand old lady. A lot Amy, of memories. Amy, Amy Phipps uh, taught when I was uh, going to elementary school up at the center school. She oh. was in her, in her uh, later years as a teacher, but uh, uh, boy, you didn't fool around with Amy Phipps. Well, I found her to be a tremendous gal. Yeah. Of course, I was a little squirt then anyway, so. Yeah. Well, there were a number of the other uh, uh, gentlemen who were veterans that you went to school with, uh, uh, perhaps you can tell them, you can remember some of them who were in your, in your class or in your grade. Well, Jerry, Jerry Bowker, of course, went to school with him and he went off into the Army. And Cliff Bowker was also in that class, well, in the school. Yeah. There were four grades down there, so. And he, he served too. Yeah, Cliff was in uh, Patton's army over uh -huh. in, uh, over in Europe. Yep. He was a tank driver. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, uh, what brought you into the army or into the service? Excuse me, into the Marines. Well, gee, things were going heating up over there, and of course, the Japs had bombed Pearl Harbor, so I was going to get drafted sooner or later. So I thought I'd pick the branch of service that I wanted. And Harold Pendleton and I decided we'd sign up, and we did. Is that right? Both of you signed yep, up same yep. time. Same time, same day. Yeah. And where did you where did you go to basic? Ah, uh, Paris Island. Yeah, ate a lot of sand. Ate a lot of sand. <laughs> now, uh, uh, Paris Island uh, for basic, and then I assume you had some other schooling that you went to as uh, well. Yeah, then we went to uh, New River. That was advanced training with arms and. That's Camp but, Lejeune now, isn't it? it, it yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, var various types of weapons and so on and combat operations and so forth. That was six weeks, I think, or eight weeks. Then from there, we went up to Cherry Point, North Carolina. And that was the aviation division of the Marine Corps on the East Coast. And how did that happen? How did you get in, involved with aviation? Oh, oh, yeah, well, we took different aptitude tests and so I on. See. And they said, you're going here and you're going there. And we get up there and that we, uh, Yes, the first thing I got up there, going to aviation school, was 30 days of mess hall. 
30 <laughs> days of what? Mess hall of duty. Mess hall duty. <laughs> we have a picture of, uh, of Tony, and uh, we'll uh, show that to you now. And uh, the, uh, what did you uh, work on on, on, the, on the airplanes at the time? Were you a mechanic? Or? Well, after the mess hall, then we get assigned to different squadrons. And I, fortunately, uh, Pethody and I both, we delegated to go to aircraft mechanic school, which was eight, two months, or three months, I forget which. And then after that, we were assigned to different squadrons. Different squadrons. Were you both involved with uh, being aircraft mechanics? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, but then your paths, uh, your paths spread apart, huh? Well, yeah. After a few months, we dissolved. <laughs> I went to Pagefield, and he remained at Cherry Point. And then we, uh, I don't know where he went from there. Yeah. And how about you? Now, uh, when you went, uh, when you went to Pace, uh, Pagefield. Pagefield. At Paris Island. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, when did you start moving towards uh, towards the Far East? Well, we were there for several months. I went down there with VMF 311, the original squadron. Then we formed VMF 312. I was one of the first 17 what guys. Is, what does VMF stand for, Tony? Heavy and Air Marine Fighter. Okay. And I think they've got another moniker on it now. Yeah. Because they used did use it for bomber too. I think that's right. Anyways, but. Uh, and from 311, they transferred to 312. More people came in. We get a bunch of new uh, pilots. And of course, we trained and trained and trained. And then uh, from there, we went to the uh, west coast of Miramar, California. Did a little more training. Then we boarded the Hornet in San Diego. Which was, uh, what, an aircraft carrier? Yeah, uh huh. Oh, I see. And from there to... When, what year was that? Was that 44, 43? Oh, wait a minute. Had to be 43, I think. 43, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Then from there we went to... Uh, we said, Yeah, we went to Hawaii. We stayed there for four months, if I, my memory serves me correctly. Then from there they shipped us off to Espirito Santo. I don't know what the hell the name is, but they've changed the name of it now. Yeah. But that was another island out there. And mosquitoes and bugs and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Great living. <laughs> now, was, was most of your work done on carriers, or were they mostly land-based? Land, mostly land-based. So you were jumping from island to island? Exactly. Following, uh, following the troops? You weren't, you weren't in, in advance of, uh, of the, any of the landings, I assume. No. Yeah. No, from, from there... Uh, Let's see. Yeah, we, we they moved the planes from there, Hawaii. We went to the New Hebrides. New Hebrides? New Hebrides, yeah. We had the airstrip down there. The fighter strip was Turtle Bay by name, mm -hmm. out in the jungle and so on. Lovely place to hide from the world. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then from there, we stayed there. I think it was about three or four months. Of course, the planes are continuously flying. I mean, patrols and experience and so on. We went to, uh, New, did I say New Hebrides? The New Hebrides, yes. Yeah. You mentioned yeah. that, that Okay, you then, there. then we went to a little island by the name of Ponam. Ponam. In the Carolyn Islands. Hmm. And it was a small one. At high tide, the transports could not land there. Why, the water was right over the right runway? Over the runway. Oh, gee, isn't that <laughs> something? Boy, that's tough, tough. Now, uh, beside us, you have a model. Is that, uh, is this what uh, primarily you were working on? This, this is the type of craft we had. Maybe yep. you could explain this for, uh, for everyone, uh, uh, what, what type of a, of a craft this is. Well, it was basically as a fighter aircraft. And it did a hell of a job. There later, they adapted the uh, rockets on it. Mm -hmm. And let's see, we had 2,750 rounds of ammunition in the wings, had eight rockets, two 500-pound bombs, and the tank underneath here could be used either as an auxiliary gas tank or they loaded it and it became a napalm bomb. Hmm. And of course, the Japanese used to call it 
whistling death, I think. Whistling death, huh? Yeah, because when, when, they, when they really zapped it, it whistled. Now, was most of, uh, most of its mission to uh, uh, attack uh, islands and land-based, or did they have air-to-air -air combat as well? It was both. They'd fly patrol, and wherever they, there was any action, they were in there after it. And, uh, of course, they didn't have run into that too much until we got to Okinawa. That's where the... Okinawa? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was our last stop at Okinawa. Yeah. From Ponam, we went back to Luganville. Yeah, and then we went to Okinawa. Okinawa was a, a pretty bloody... Uh, yeah, a little nasty one. Yeah. What, yeah. Uh, were you... On a, on a carrier at that point, off, uh, no, off no. of Okinawa, or were you? We, we went up on a, uh, an LST, God mm -hmm. bless them. That was an experience. <laughs> we, we went up there in a convoy. And, yeah, the LST had dirt and the fuel lines. So they left us there with a small destroyer escort. Well, three days later, we caught up with the convoy <laughs> in this little paper with George destroyer escort, of course. Running around, fortunately, no Japs in the area. But anyways, we got up to Okinawa, and we went ashore there on D plus one. D plus one. What, yeah. What, what do you mean by D plus one? Well, the ground crew put in the first day, I first see. of April. We went in the second day. I see. They cleared the way for us. <laughs> I wish it was just so. Anyway. Yeah. And then the uh, pilots came in the sixth of April. Yeah, that was an exciting little place. Now, do you, uh, in that intervening period there between D plus one and D plus six, uh, what are you, preparing the planes for? Uh... No, the planes hadn't arrived oh, yet, hadn't I'm sorry. We, we had to go in there, Kadena was the name of the airstrip, and we used helmets and so on to fill holes. Oh, to prepare the, yeah. uh, the airstrip. In other words, from... secure the airport it's good, the best we could so it had to be safe for them to come in on. Hmm. But uh, that was exciting, too. How long were you in Okinawa? Let's see. We went there in April. I left in June, I think it was. Oh, so two or three months. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, where did you go from Okinawa? Back to California. Back to... <laughs> now, now, you bumped into some guys or, or knew some people from Hocken and in, that you saw in Hawaii as oh, well? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was all home week in Hawaii. Oh, was it? <laughs> and, and was this after the war? No, or? this was before. Okay. On the way out before we went out. Yeah, and we ran into... I ran into Tom Brown at the post office, Jack O'Brien in the hospital, Paul Phipps. I don't recall where the hell he was, but he was there. Bob Bourne. Yeah. Ray Bowker, he was in the CBs. Another one of the Bowker, Bowker yep. lads, yep. huh? Yeah, yeah. Ray was, uh, I remember hearing stories from Ray about his days as a CB. Yeah, he was the oldest one of the boys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after, uh, uh, so when you, when you left Okinawa, you came back to California. Yep. Now, you, you stayed in the service for a while, didn't you? No. No? Days, but... What's that? Oh, oh, just, Days, months, till I got... Sure. Well, anyways, we got on a... Yeah, we got on a, a troop ship from Okinawa. And about that time, they had dropped the A-bomb. I see. And so they sent us to, to Baba in the Philippines. We got off of that ship. They wanted to carry troops to Japan. And we languished there for about two months. Then they brought in a, a lame carrier for us to get on. And it took us, I think it was four weeks to get home from the Philippines. You, they, you mean a, a carrier that had been, uh, was limping say, along a little bit? They stopped at every little island to do a little repair and so on. We finally got home anyway. And it and, was great. And uh, so you were stationed or, or uh, put into the Philippines. A receiving uh, station. For really the uh, last attack that really never really happened, exactly. right? Exactly. And, and that was uh, just before the end of the war in, in Japan? The war had ended. I see. And we were aboard a ship when it ended. So they wanted that troop ship to carry people into Japan. So they sent us off, and we went to, to Babo in the Philippines. That was a holding pen, I guess. Sure. And uh, we stayed there, I think it was, for three weeks. And then this limping carrier came along, and they <laughs> threw us aboard. and. 
we lived home, <laughs> stopping at every little pinpoint on the way. And when it took, probably took probably took you a couple of weeks to get back. After. It did. Yeah, it did. Really. Now you had a, a, a brother. Uh, uh, guy. Also in the service, right? Yeah, yeah. He was uh, with the army. That, that's guy. Yep. And and, and he was from Hopkinton as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. You all lived on Hayden Row. That's right. Exactly. That was home. Now, where did 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 guy serve? In uh, he was in Europe. Europe. I, I think it was Patton's Fifth Army, if I remember right. Yeah. Uh, that's where uh, uh, that's Cliff was also with the Fifth uh -huh. Army and. Over there, yeah. The from his conversations, he never was too talkative. But once he got talking, like, I guess it's pretty nasty over there too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think either either side of uh, of us was a particularly uh, fun a place to uh, <laughs> be, and and certainly the Marines were uh, the spear, or the tip of the spear. Well, we'd like to. The... We like used to like to think so, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've talked with a number of. Uh, of other vets from Hopkinton yep. who were Marines, and certainly uh, their involvement uh, uh, in, in Marines was was pretty significant. And uh, you know, they recently had a, a ceremony for uh, uh, heroes from Iwo Jima. And oh yeah, I, I yeah, know, yeah. Uh, John was there, John Cahill, and uh, mm -hmm. I forget who else. Paul was was there as Bobby well. Bobby Roy. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, they did a little uh, a little pictorial on them, and it was uh, it was quite gratifying. Uh, you know, those of us uh, I'll put myself younger. I'm not that much that young, but uh, <laughs> uh, we certainly marvel at, at a small town like Hopkinton at the time, a couple of thousand people, no more, yeah. uh, and so many uh, veterans who saw combat both in Europe and uh, and in Japan, and it's part of the reason for us beginning this series called Veterans Remember mm -hmm, was mm -hmm. really to give them an opportunity to talk about some of their experiences in the service and and uh, what a small uh, small world it is because so many of them would run into one another in various theaters uh, whether yeah, it's in it Europe is. or whether it was in Japan. Well I know my brother Guy when he was in Italy over there he ran at who? Bud Fair I think it was. Oh Ray Fair? Ray Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ray was, uh, yeah, we've interviewed Ray, and uh, of course, Ray's doing doing well. I know I, uh, Ray comes up to me all the time. He's, what, 93 now, I think. And he, Is he that old? Right? Yeah, and he comes up to me and asks me how I'm doing because I had a little surgery last summer. Yeah, I yeah. always get a kick out of having being asked how I am by a 93-year-old. But uh, <laughs> It's great, you know, when you say 93 and I'm saying, is he that old? Well, I'll be 84 on my next birthday. So. <laughs> now, after you uh, left the service, uh, you came back to Hopkinton. I did. And uh, uh, tell me about the, the, your after-war experiences here in Hopkinton and what you did uh, well, I after you get out of the Army. Or, excuse me, the Marines. Yeah, I keep be careful saying that. Be I, careful there. I better be careful, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what I wanted to do, to be honest with you. Right around, went down to Pennsylvania and down to Florida. Finally came back, and I, I thought it was time I'd start to do something. So I just one Saturday morning, I got in my little car and I went over to Draper Corporation, and they hired me. And I was there for 35 years, so I guess it wasn't all that bad. <laughs> well, and, Draper and I, was in its heyday at yeah, that point yeah, in time, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I wound up as a plant manager over there, so I. Uh, we did well with each other, I guess you'd say. Well, that's good. Uh, you know, I know the the town of Hopedale is uh, uh, certainly uh, founded by uh, Drapers, and yep. uh, you know, most of the the housing in and around the Hopedale Pond is uh, is all Draper housing. That, that's right. Uh, I actually lived over there for a short period of oh, time in one of those houses, and they're just beautiful old homes. Yeah, they. Uh... They did right well with the people that lived in them. Now, I know some of the homes there, the little homes up on the hill, for instance. There were five or six rooms, and I think they used to pay 15 or $18 a month, something like that, or $12. Well, I, I heard stories about how they, how people from the plant would come over and change light bulbs for, oh, yeah, for people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, for really yeah you wanted experience. your house painted or room painted and so on. They'd put you in the list, and eventually they'd get there. Yeah, And, of course, they... I used to get the feeling that they wanted all supervised and so on to live in town. Well, I was offered the opportunity, but 
I liked Hopkins, so I stayed in Hopkins. <laughs> now, did you marry a Hopkins girl? No, I married a Hopedale girl. A Hopedale girl. Yeah. Okay, so yep. the the, the uh... yeah, I met her over there. Uh, in fact, in the particular department that I uh, worked in, and it was on a dare. Nobody's going to take her out. She's waiting for her boyfriend or whatever it was to come back. So it didn't happen. <laughs> I snuck in there. <laughs> and and uh, uh, so you raised your family here in, in, in Hopkins. Hopkins. You lived right on right on Hayden Row. Yep. And uh, what was it like uh, back that time in Hopkins? Well, it wasn't as crowded as it is now. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine. I imagine. But of the grand old town, I think it still is. We're getting crowded, but I guess they call that progress. Well, I think it is, it is progress for sure. And, uh, you know, uh, those of us who've been around Hopkins, and I'm, I'm in and out of town, and, you know, uh, but uh, uh, we recognize it. And, you know, you grin and bear some of the things that get done, but. Uh, it was kind of nice, though, to have it laid back, you know, the little country. Town and so on. As the world changes, so does it, so do we. Now you have uh, how many? You have a couple of daughters. I have two daughters. And and are they? Uh, One lives in Hopkins and on Pike Street. Fran Santucci. Yeah. Oh, Hus sure. Husband works for the fire department. Right. My other daughter is over in Whitensville. And. Uh, so nobody really moved too far away from Hopkins. No, no. My son's living in Holliston, so we're all so close by. Everybody, uh, everybody hangs around. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell me, what uh, what other things do you recall from your military experience uh, that uh, you think would be would be interesting for uh, our folks to to hear? Anything you can think well, of? Well, at one point in time, I thought I wanted to go. They were organizing paratroops. Mm-hmm. Well, after making four jumps, I decided it wasn't for me anymore. <laughs> you did four jumps. What, what did you? How many did you need to qualify? Like ten? I don't remember yeah. what the qualification, but I made four. You didn't. You, you, no, I didn't take two. two. Now the first couple were bungee cords, and next two were on planes. And I liked I liked the ground. It was a lot safer to be on the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. Uh, Listen, uh, we really appreciate you uh, spending time with us today and sharing with us some of your experiences. Uh, again, the, uh, uh, the Veterans Remember, which, uh, you know, is a, uh, an opportunity for us to share some of these stories. And uh, we've spent a lot of time uh, initially with World War II veterans mm -hmm. uh, as World War II veterans get a little bit older. <laughs> and uh, we've begun to also uh, experience uh, uh, Korean War veterans, and we're pretty soon going to start to talk with some Vietnam War, War veterans and then move into uh, more recent conflicts. It is an opportunity for us to educate our children and our grandchildren and uh, give people an opportunity to, to uh, uh, explain uh, what has gone on uh, both at wartime and in peacetime by people who serve their country and uh, really do things that allow us to to be as free as we are today and, and to have appreciation for those experiences. Uh, Veterans Remember uh, uh, has been contacted by uh, the National Archives uh, who has expressed some interest in, in uh, in hearing from our Hopkins and veterans, and uh, having the opportunity to spend a few minutes, as we've done today, uh, with you and with others, mm -hmm. uh, really uh, makes it a rich history. And we hope that we can uh, have our children uh, have the opportunity to see some of these in school. I know uh, every year uh, veterans get to go into the schools. I hope you get that chance one of these days oh. uh, to talk with, uh, with, with young school children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is quite an experience and we you know, you know, uh, encourage people with doing it. Uh, I know Tony has a, a unit patch uh, that you shared with us. Uh, what was that unit, uh, Tony, that, uh, the patch that uh, they're shining on the, on the board right now? 
BMF 312. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. And, the, and that was? That uh, was the name of the fighter squadron, I BMF see. 312, designated. And you hopped on, you were in that for most of the time while you were, you were overseas? Well, I, I shot it in the dive bomber squadron. Yeah. And then I went to a fighter squadron, BMF 311, and then moved to Paris Island. That's where we formed BMF 312, and I stayed with it yeah. for the duration. I got something here I wanted to show you, maybe. Dick. Oh, you do. I don't know whether you saw it or not. Okay, well, we might want to we might want to uh, flash back on. What is that? The Yontan airstrip in Okinawa. Japanese oh, are coming in with Allah. suicide bombers, and that's the wow. bullets that are going up the up in the air. Going at is that right. Boy, I don't know whether we can get this mic or not. So, so Tony, uh, please tell me what, what, uh, what we're looking at here. The, the, this was, of course, at Okinawa, and the Japanese were coming in on night flights, going to crash land on the runway with troops and so on. And what you see there are our, our people firing at the Japanese, and those are all traces. Now, you've got to stop and realize, I believe it was, Three or four or five bullets. Yeah, it's about every fifth. I think it's every fifth one yeah. is a tracer. Right. right. So you can see the lead that's coming up there. And God, that stuff was coming down like hailstones. Oh, man. Boy, isn't that something. Well, again, thank you. What else do you have? you have anything else? Oh, in just your, the in your uh, time I get in the, went in the service and oh, I just okay. shot. <laughs> well, I want to thank you again. And, uh, you know, we appreciate your, your time. And, it's and, been a pleasure, uh, Dick. Thanks for sharing this with us. And we'll get Mike to scan this in. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Tune in to HCAM News for complete and up-to-date coverage of Hopkinton. Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 6 p.m. for our latest newscast from the HCAM studios. From high school sports and governmental coverage to community affairs and culture, if it's Hopkinton, HCAM News keeps you informed. Between newscasts, visit our website at hcam.tv for late-breaking news and expanded coverage of our top stories. Tune in to Comcast Channel 8 or Verizon Channel 30.